go. We are we are doing it. Clone on top. Very good. We're going to do this and see if it works. Okay. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. What's happening, YouTube peoples? Uh, everybody's gone to bed, and I got a couple of minutes to myself. So, man, that light is something, isn't it? Okay, there we go. So we're going to give this a try here. And I am very quickly going to talk about the six days of creation, the seventh day of rest, and the eighth day of Adam and Eve. Okay, this is this is really, uh, what was it, 30 years ago probably, uh, when I first dove into the Bible and decided I was going to, I was going to read this thing and I was going to find out what was going on. Uh, I started, of course, in Genesis 1. And the first thing that struck me is when I got to the sixth day, I saw that God had created man and woman. And uh, then, as I kept reading, he kind of repeated himself and said, okay, this is where I created Adam and Eve. And I didn't understand why he would reiterate and, and say, I, I did it once, I'm doing it again. It didn't make sense to me. And I, I asked people who I thought, um, you know, understood the Bible, in, in my estimation, people who I thought were, you know, religious types. And nobody really had an answer for me, which was frustrating. So I, I, I started reading Matthew instead of Genesis, and it, it took me a little while to figure this out. But... Uh, we're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a, a quick crack at this because one of the uh, comments on uh, one of my recent videos said that well we know certainly you don't believe in Adam and Eve I mean that's allegory it's it's just a story it's not real well uh, au contraire is what I say about that uh, but first let's get something covered here Genesis one chapter one in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, period, period. Doesn't say when, there's, there's, there's no time signature here. You don't, you know, we, we know that the earth is, is potentially millions, who knows, a billion years old for all we know. And we, we don't know nothing, you know? And they tell us stuff in school and we still don't know nothing, all right? But right here in verse two it says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, this happened a long time ago, and God did not create the earth, you know, without form and void. Okay, and darkness was not upon the face of the deep. This is where we're going to learn. First off, I'll tell you what, come with me, and we're going to go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah right quickly here. Let's go, and you probably heard me say this before, uh, you know, as I as I ramble on. Uh, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 45, and we're going to read verse 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. He did not create the earth void and without form. It became that way, okay? So when we read, when we read Genesis, the first, the first verse here, in the beginning God created heaven and earth, that's the end. And when you read the second verse, this is where our age starts. Okay? This this is where our age starts. He's going to he's going to clean it now it says here, and the earth was without form. Now this when you read it in the Hebrew, it says Tohu Vabohu. Okay, which I mean if you're if you're not a, a student of Hebrew, that, that doesn't mean a lot to you. It just sounds stupid really. Tohu Vabohu. But in Hebrew, it means the earth became without form and void. God made it that way. This is what happened when Satan 
rebelled against God, confused a whole bunch of his children, who happened to be us. This happened to us a long time ago, okay? Before we were in flesh and blood bodies, this happened. And, um, and you know, Satan was a good angel for a long time. He was a cherub. And what, his job was to watch over the mercy seat of Christ. And he, he got so full of himself and had so much pride within himself that he even thought he was better than God. Okay, and he wanted, rather than to watch over the mercy seat of Christ, he wanted to sit on the seat of Christ and be the, the, the Lord of all of us, okay? And he, and he started lobbying for himself and, and lying about who he was. Uh, and he actually got one-third of God's children to follow him, okay? And you can read about that in Ezekiel chapter 28 and you can go to Isaiah chapter 14 and you can read about Satan and read his story he uh, he he rose up the ladder and, and did a lot of great things and, and God created him as as uh, you know just a really beautiful angel and wise and uh, but but unfortunately he got so full of himself and he got so fond of his self that uh, that's where he fell okay and when he did get as many as a third of, of us to believe him and to start following him around and calling him God and then uh, there was a whole bunch of other people who just didn't know what was going on and didn't care one way or the other you, you know people they're, they're the same that they are today that they were in the first age they don't know what's going on they don't want to hear about it you try and tell them about Christ Jesus and you try and tell them about salvation and, and it's almost a, a it creates a, a, a very uncomfortable thing with people, and they don't want to talk about it. It's the, it, it's no different then than than it is now. Okay, so and you say, well, wait a minute. What's what's all this this Earth age? Just tell you what. Let's let's get that out of the way. There was one age before this. This is the second age of this Earth. This is this is where we're being tried, so that God can find out who truly loves Him and who doesn't love him or doesn't care and they want to follow the ways of the world because God is sifting he's sifting out his children and all the bad children who don't love him are unfortunately going to be uh, they're going to vanish in the lake of fire they're not going to burn forever and ever I know that revelation makes it sound like that but that's that's not you know again if you read that in the Greek you you'll see that what really happens is they're blotted out blotted out of our memory, blotted out of history, they're gone, the fire consumes them. What does fire do when it burns something up? It's gone. It, it goes up in smoke forever and ever and it's gone forever and ever. And nobody will ever re remember them. We, we serve a God who loves us. Okay, and and doesn't Revelation also say that, that in the third age, what we consider heaven, the heaven age, that there will be no tears and no sorrow? Okay, so what if what if your old Uncle Eddie never could get his act straight? And he he seemed like a pretty good Joe, but he he didn't believe in God, and he you know who knows what he did? He he drank a bunch, and he just couldn't get his act together, and he had some issues, and he just didn't care about God, and he never got saved. Do you do you think it's going to be heaven when every morning you get up and you look out and see a, an ocean of fire? And there's old Uncle Eddie out there just screaming and crying and burning and, and, and you know, no. No, they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone from our memories. They're going to be gone like they never existed. Now, let's go, let's go to uh, Second Peter and let's lay down some, some, uh, some benchmarks here. You know, this is why you need the full Word of God. It doesn't do any good necessarily to just know one book or know a few passages from this book and a few passages from a couple other books and, and try and put the Word of God together, it'll never make sense to you. You have to open it up in the beginning the right way. You have to, you have to read it and ingest it and have it become a part of you from the way God lays it out in the beginning makes it so that you can understand the rest. If you don't understand the first six chapters of Genesis, you're not going to understand anything that's in the Bible. Okay, so let's let's check out Second Peter in, in uh, chapter 3. 
and uh, and let's let's uh, let's re repeat some of this stuff, starting with, with verse three. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, "Where is the promise of his coming?" For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You hear that today. We are in the end times, and you'll hear that from people. They're, ah, what are you talking about? There ain't no God. There ain't no... It, everything's the same day in, day out, sun up, sun down. Nothing's ever going to change, and you're just believing in fairy, fairy tales, right? You hear that all the time. You try and share a little wisdom, a little nugget of, of, of something, and, and they, they, they just scoff at you. All right, so for this, they willingly are ignorant of. Why are they willing? They will not read the Bible. They will not search the scriptures. They, they don't want to hear about it. For this, they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Okay, now the earth itself, the land, the actual dirt, the, the arets in the Hebrew, the, the earth itself, all right, that didn't go. God put an end to that age, that eon, all right? And, uh, and that age perished, okay? And he took everybody off the land. He, he took... Uh, all the birds and all the animals, he emptied out all the cities. Now, this is not Noah's flood. This is not that Noah's flood had a specific target. The giants that were created by the fallen angels who were trying to stop Christ Jesus from being born because Satan knew that Christ Jesus would be the end of him. So as soon as he figured out what family was going to produce the perfect Messiah to be sacrificed to put Satan to death legally, well, he zeroed in on that family, and he started to try and pollute their bloodline. He tried to make it so that Christ Jesus couldn't be born perfect, right? From Eve all the way to Mary, with no break in the bloodline and no pollution. And, and, and he had to be perfect in every single way. There had to be no reason whatsoever at all, unquestionably, no reason to be put to death. Okay? So, so this is not Noah's flood. Noah's flood still had people, all right? Uh, they were on the ark, and frankly, I don't think Noah's flood was worldwide. I think that it had, like I said, a specific region where these giants were because they messed up the DNA of humankind. It not only did it hurt Adam's family and Christ Jesus' ability to be, to be born perfect, but it also... It, they were messing with everything. They were messing with genes and DNA, and, and they were they were following up the whole idea. So God put an end to them with a flood. Okay, but Noah took two of all flesh onto the uh, the ark with him, and that that includes whatever people lived in the area, uh, if there were Asian people, if there were white people, black people, whatever. All right, there's there's basically three types of humans. All right, this this race business is uh, it, it, that's Satan's game. Don't even don't even fall for that stuff, okay? All right, we're all children of God. God made us the way He likes us, okay? So don't don't fall into that trap, uh, you know. Uh, now I'm getting too chatty. It, now that wasn't Noah's flood. This is this is whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. God put an end to that age, he cleansed the earth, and he started it again, only this time he was going to have us be born innocent of everything that happened in this age that he destroyed. And he would give us 120 years to live, not, not counting, you know, before Genesis chapter 6, that's when he put a limit, all right? Prior to that, people were living almost a thousand years, and, and that was too long, and God placed a limit on mankind of 120 years. Okay, you couldn't live to be older than 120. But in your life, you would be you would be given the word of God, so you could tell right and wrong. You could tell what God's will was. You know, you 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 had that book of knowledge and wisdom to help you through this life, because in this life you would meet 
good and you would meet evil, and it was up to you to choose because you have free will. God, God doesn't want robots who just go, I love you, God, I love you, God, all day. That, he, you know, love is something that comes from inside of you, and it grows and it goes outward to other people. Now, that has to start with you. God can't put that in you. All right? With your free will, you have to decide if you're going to love God and if you're going to believe his word and do what you're supposed to do to, to, to make it to the next stage, or if you're just not going to care and you're going to follow the way, ways of the world and, frankly, Satan, because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He, he, uh, he, he is allowed by God to, to, uh, to be who he is and influence who he can. And you're being tested, plain and simple. That's what your life is about. It's a test to see whether or not you're going to love God. Because if you're not going to love God, and if you're not going to find salvation for your soul through the Lord Christ Jesus, you're not going to be allowed to live in the heaven age or the third age. All right, so let, let's, let's get on with this. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water, the entire earth perished. All right. Verse 7, But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. All right. Now, God did promise Noah after the flood that he would never you know he would never destroy the earth again with water he would never use water to correct us again this time it's going to be fire okay and it's it's going to burn the rudiments you, you'll see the word elements come up but it's 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 actually rudiments would have been a, a much better translation remember the King James is only an English translation that's why we have a Strong's Concordance, we have Smith Bible Dictionary, we've got a lot of good study tools that are keyed in to the King James. That's why I only teach the King James. Okay, because we have study tools that can bring every single English word back to the original Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic, uh, and some Chaldee, that uh, Chaldean language. Um, we can get right back to the original word. Okay, and you can find the definition that the translators decided to translate each word from, and you can decide for yourself if that's a good translation or not. And it, it, that, the, those, those tools don't work with any other Bible, only the King James. All right? But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved under, under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Perdition gone but beloved and this is important especially for what i'm about to dive into this this is key and you'll also see this written in psalm 90 for a second witness but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day all right one thousand of our years is only a day to god all right, that's, that's one day to God. So when, when, when God says he's doing certain things and it took him X amount of time to do it, you can't reckon it in our years, okay? Because a thousand of our years is one day to God. And you'll read, like I said, you'll read that again in Psalm 90. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, to us word not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Don't you understand? That's what this is all about. We are his children, and he loves each and every one of us. He doesn't want to lose any of his children. And sadly enough, he's already lost Satan. Satan, his judgment has come and gone. He's had every single bit of uh, leeway, and as you or I will ever have, God is fair in everything that he does, and Satan has gone above and beyond in evil, and he is irredeemable. And God has already judged him to perish. That's why in the Bible, when you read that the Antichrist is the son of perdition, then you know the Antichrist is Satan himself because he is the only person in the Bible by name. Now, there are there's some of those bad angels who fell and they, they, they started following after Adam's daughters and started trying to pollute the bloodline and they ended up with 
the, the giants running around. Now, some of those angels have also been judged to perdition, but we don't know their names. Okay, and don't get me started on the book of Enoch. That's a, that's a, a whole nother video for a whole nother day. Uh, you know, you don't know who wrote Enoch, and there are two Enochs, one good and one evil. Cain had a child named Enoch as well, so you don't you don't know who wrote that book. But that's for another day. All right, but he is he is not slack. He is he wants every single body to have a good fair chance to decide whether or not they're going to love him. All right. That's his will. He even said in Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, he said, I don't want your burnt offerings. I never wanted that stuff. I, I, I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your money. What God wants from you is your mercy. And that's what it says in Hosea, and that means your love. Your love given to him. True love. You can't BS him, okay? You really, you really have to love God, and he knows whether, whether you do or don't. Okay? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements, there you go, the rudiments, the evil part of the world, of this age, shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Okay? Skip over here. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth that's regenerated cleansed same old earth same old earth that's always been here same heaven because anywhere god is that's heaven okay and god has never left us since he's created us so it's 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 you're not getting a new god and you're not getting a new heaven you're it's the same old heaven but it's purged of any evil all right a new heaven and a new earth. That's going to be the third earth age, the third heaven age, what we call going to heaven. Right. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Okay? All right, so there's the three earth ages. All right, so now I want to go back to Genesis, and I'm going to try and wrap this up because I, I just want to make a the point about Adam and Eve and how it's not just a tale with with a with something for us to learn this is what actually happened okay so in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth period all right that was the first earth age and all the things that belonged to it and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light, and there was light. Now, I want you to also realize that at this point, he has not created the sun or the moon. But we do have light. All right, so think about that. Who is that light? See what I'm saying? Something to think about. God saw the light that it was good and divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And God said, let, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay? I don't want to get too heavy for you there, but what do you think space is? When God says, and the windows of heaven opened and water gushed in, what, what do you think is outside of the firmament? We've got clouds and lakes and streams and oceans here with us, and then there's a firmament, and then there's more water? something to think about but th now this actually happened all right so he did this and God called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning Wait a minute. I skipped over and God called the light day and darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day all right what is a day with the Lord a thousand years there is one thousand years right there God said, let there be a firmament. Sorry, because I, I skipped ahead. I, I get the yapping and uh, I can't get it all out. Uh, separating the waters from the waters. He made the firmament. He divided the waters. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. What is a day with the Lord? A thousand years. There's two thousand years of the recreation. 
getting this earth ready for the second age that you and I live in now. All right? And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. He called the dry land earth, and he called the waters seas. And God saw that it was good. And he said, let the, let the earth bring forth grass, herbs yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, the seed in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herbs and the trees and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day three thousand years have passed all right 14 and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs what is the Sun and the earth for for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. God talks to us with the sun and the moon and the stars. All right, and some people, certainly not me, but there are people out there who have the gift of being able to be watchmen and read those signs. All right. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. All right. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and God saw it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day, 4,000 years. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after this wildlife. He's making wildlife, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them. Now, here's the first law given in the, in the Bible. This is law. When God makes a statement and says, do this, it becomes law. This is the first law in the Bible. Verse 22. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Five thousand years have passed. 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. He made mammals, okay, warm-blooded creatures. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind, or antelopes, gnus, you know, you see what I'm saying? And everything that creeps upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now, this is key. And this is where I first got confused when I first started reading the Bible. This, this, this threw me for a loop. But the simplicity of it is so simple that it, it, it's almost like getting hit in the head with a brick. It's like when this, when this dawned on me, I was like, oh my, how stupid can I be, right? Or, or how empty-headed can I be? That this is so simple, and it's it's like when you read the Bible, you in your mind you set up this 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 gravity, this weight. Oh, I've got, I've got to study this Bible, and this is serious, and 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 the simplicity just whizzes right by some people. It certainly did for me. And God said, "Let us make man." Who's he talking to? Let us. Certainly Christ. But he says, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness." Who is he talking to there? In the first earth age, he took all the men off of the earth, which means they were in heaven with him, and that's you and me and everybody, okay? Now, let, let's take another little, we're at 26, but we'll take another little side note here because I want to go to Jeremiah. I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 4, all right? Because in Jeremiah chapter 4, God is really dressing down Israel. Because they're they're stiff necked bunch, they won't listen to God, they, they do whatever they want, and God is telling them, if you will return, O Israel, return to me, if you'll put away your abominations, and he starts dressing them down. He says, Listen, you you guys 
you're messing everything up. You're, you're, you're whizzing me off and I'm tired of it. And I'll put an end to this. I'll put an end to you. And if you think I won't, let me tell you what I've already done. When he gets to verse, when he gets you know, to 18 and 19, he says, Thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reaches unto thine heart. And he's dressing down Israel and saying, you, You're really messing up. And if you think I won't put an end to you, I will. Look what I did already. And now he goes back to the first earth age. My bowels, I am pained at my very heart. Okay, he's telling you, my, my insides tremble. I'm so upset over this. God, God has emotions. We have emotions. God has emotions. You can hurt him. These people were hurting his feelings because he's their father. He created them in love and loving them and practically babysitting with them. And they still won't straighten up and they will not listen to God. And he's telling them, I am pained at my very heart. My heart makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? This is God is lamenting. All the stuff that happened when Satan was going around fooling people, and they were actually going for it. They were following him around and calling him God. You parents out there, imagine how you feel. You've got, you've got a little one, and they, they start calling somebody else daddy or mommy. You, I, I wish I could put it into words, what that feels like. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are soddish children. God plain, plainly speaks here. My children are stupid. Look, look that word up, soddish. He's saying my children are stupid. And they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. And he tells them straight up, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. I beheld the earth, and lo, it became without form and void. Tohu. It became void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. Remember what, he, what Christ said, that he would leave no stone standing on top of the other the next time he does this. Well, this time the mountains moved, they trembled, and the hills moved lightly. So all you people out there with your mud floods and where did these buildings come from? You know, a lot of that stuff belongs to the first earth age. And, I, and you'll see that here in a moment. I beheld and lo, there was no man. Now in Noah's flood, there was people. There was still people on, uh, there was, there was uh, Noah and his family. And there was two of every flesh. Okay, so there was plenty of people on that ark. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. Now on Noah's ark, there, at the very least, you know, there was a raven and there was a dove. Okay, and he was told to take the clean animals by sevens. And he was told to take the unclean animals in pairs. Well, in this scenario, all the birds of the heavens were fled. And I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. See? Cities. We had cities. Wherever there's people, there's no new thing under the sun. We build stuff now, we built stuff then. We have electricity now, we had electricity then. We've got the internet now, we had the internet then. There's nothing new under the sun. All right? All the cities thereof were broken down. There were cities, and there, you can still see them. You can still see ruins from the first earth age. For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have proposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. He, hey! He put an end to that age, all right? And he let the earth have it. And he took us all out of the picture. 
Okay, he took us out of the picture. So let's go back to 26 because he's talking to us. And God said, Behold, oops, and God said, Let us make man in our image. You look now the same way you looked then. That's the way God made you. Well, I mean, except we're in flesh and bone, probably, you know, Christ was Christ was 33. Uh, so we, we probably all look we probably all look to be about 33 years old. Only we're, we're a little prettier, I'm sure, uh, without this flesh. Uh, the flesh and bodies are, they're a mess, you know, but it was necessary. He had to do it. Because pr in the first earth age, we had, we had uh, spiritual bodies that didn't age. They didn't itch. We didn't have our bodies constantly clawing at us, telling us what to do. In the second age, it's, it's a problem, you know, policing yourself. You know, they were called disciples because they, they had to learn discipline. It's very difficult to discipline ourselves. It's a, it's a problem. And it's, it's, it's a tough road to hoe uh, to teach yourself how to get along with these flesh bodies. You know? But it, it had to be done. So God created man in his own image. In God's image, yes, we, we look like God. We have two arms and two legs and a head and eyes and nose and stuff like that. We don't look like God. Christ Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Christ Jesus looked like God because he is God. We look like ourselves. You look now the way you looked then. All right? But, the, but this threw me for a loop. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, Christ Jesus, especially. Male and female created he them. That's you and me. That's all the people that will ever be born in this age. Okay? He created men and women of every race or every type, whatever. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, here comes the second law. That is, that is in the Bible, the, the second law. Be fruitful and multiply. And, uh-oh, what's this word right here? Be fruit, uh, replenish. Replenish the earth. Why? Because there was, there's plenty of us, and we were all on the earth already once. Now he's saying replenish the earth because he took everybody out of the picture. He took everybody off the earth. Now he's telling us to fill the earth back up. All right, you can't you can't replenish something that never had anything in it. Something had to be in it. It had to be emptied, and now you have to refill it, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that move upon the earth. We're we're top dogs. People are are the top of the chain. All right, the height of the ladder. Now, just an aside, because I really hate governments. I really do. And people who get involved in governments, they start to want to lord over other people. And there's something mentally wrong with anybody who wants to lord over somebody else. Okay? In a work environment, it's necessary. But when you truly enjoy pushing people around and telling people what to do, Show me here where God said, push everybody around and I, I, I give you dominion over another person. Did he, did he ever say that? No. You're born a sovereign, free child of the living God. And this is what he's given you. Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's not counting other people. This is your earth. As much as it is the next person's earth, and we're all equal in that. And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree and wood from the earth, you will see, it'll be for you for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every living thing that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life, I've given you every green herb for meat, and it was so, and, and I loved this. And and God said everything that, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Okay? He made man on the earth, and it was very good. And that was the sixth 
day. 6,000 years of recreating this earth and getting all the, all the gears turning again and, and, and getting this whole second age going. All right? Okay, 6,000 years. Now let's go to chapter 2. I'll wrap this up. Thus, now follow along with me, okay? This is concentric. You, you have to follow along. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. He's done. He was done recreating, regenerating. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Now, and certainly don't think because God was tired. He did that for the sake of the earth. Okay? Now, you've got 6,000 years. 1,000 of those years is full of people. And then he rests on the seventh day. That's 2,000 years. 2,000 years worth of people. Okay? Feeding themselves with the fruits off the trees and the nuts and the berries. You had fishermen. You had hunters. There, you had all these people with dominion over the earth and, and top of the food chain, as it, as, it, as it is said. And they're doing stuff. And they're 2,000 years worth of people. Okay? And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, the seventh day was sanctified. And for Israel, that meant there was one day out of the week that he didn't want you to work, he wanted you to rest. Okay? That was Old Testament. Now, this changed when Christ Jesus was put upon the cross. And Paul tells you, I, I believe in, in Colossians, it's getting kind of late, my, my, my computer skips up here sometimes. Uh, in Colossians, you'll find out that Christ Jesus on the cross became our Sabbath. He became our Passover. He is the Passover lamb, okay? So the seventh day is no longer a day of the week. 24 hours and if you're if you're realistic with yourself you realize that 24 hours isn't going to rest you you know how it is you know how it is to slug all week and even work saturday take take sunday off lay around on the couch have a couple beers try and relax do whatever it is that you do or pursue whatever it is that you want to pursue get some family time in and then monday bam right back to work it's like you, it's, it's like you never even had sunday off you know that one day is not going to rest you. What's being said here is that Christ Jesus is the sanctification. And in it, he had rested from all his work. The only rest that you're ever going to get for your soul is being a part of the Lord Christ Jesus. Because Christ Jesus is our rest. Okay? If you don't have, if you're not a part of the body of Christ, you'll you'll never find rest. You you will never find rest. These are right, verse four. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth, and when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant in the field before it was on the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth; it hadn't rained yet. And there was not a man, this is key, this is key, there was not a man to till the ground. And remember back on the sixth day, he told all those people, uh, uh, the fruits of the trees and the, and, and the fish and the animals, you know, that's how you'll feed yourself, that's how you'll, you'll, you'll get along. But he had not, he looked around and he said, hey, I don't have a farmer, okay, he he didn't have anybody to farm the land, and he didn't, he didn't put that on anybody from the sixth day. All right? But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed. Now, he, he doesn't say created here. He says formed. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, that kind of... 
that's kind of watered down in the King James and in the English. It's, it's, it, it doesn't really get down to the meat and potatoes of what's going on here. On the sixth day, he created men and women of all the different races, all the different types of people, okay? He had fishermen, he had, he had, uh, he had uh, hunters, he had, he had people who would, who would just eat stuff off the trees and stuff that they came upon and found. But he didn't have a farmer. Now this is after the creation. This is the eighth day, logically. What comes after the seventh day? He was done resting, and then the eighth day, God formed man. Now, it says men and women in 26, and if you read that in the Hebrew, there's no article to that. It's, it's generic. It's just mankind, all right? Here, if you read this in the Hebrew, there is not only just an article, Ha Adam, okay, this, this is a specific man, but he even added a particle, Eth, this very man, Eth Ha Adam. If you read this in Hebrew, and if you read this from the, uh, from the original manuscripts, you're going to find out that this man here is a special man. This is different. This is Eth Ha Adam, this very man. He breathed into him the breath of life. What is the breath of life? These are all things to think about, right? And man became a living soul. This is when the plan started. This is the family who is going to produce uh, the Messiah, God with us on earth. And this is when, now all the people from the sixth day, they, they weren't in any danger. They weren't being tested. They had a specific job. Get this earth going again. Let's let's get these. So these people, I, I don't know if they were of the elect. That would be my guess. Uh, but but they, they weren't doing their thing to gain salvation, obviously. They were there doing a specific job for God. Okay? This is when man became a living soul. This is when... He, he, people had to start deciding whether they wanted to follow God or whether they wanted to follow Christ. Now, Christ hasn't come yet, but this man's family is going to produce Christ, okay? So God gave them a law to follow, and that law is like a shadow. If Christ Jesus was to stand under the sun and cast a shadow, that would be the law. And if you followed the law, and you followed it all the way, eventually you're going to get to the feet of Christ Jesus. Okay, so everything that made Christ Jesus perfect was, was following the law properly. Okay, he is the fulfillment of the law. The law still exists, and the law is still our schoolmaster. It's still the proper way to live your life, but that's not how... The, now, all those laws and all these... This stuff, people say, well, in the Old Testament, God said, you got to stone this person, and you can't be having this, and you can't be having that. God had to crack down on one family, all right? And it happens to be the family of Adam, all right? And he needed one family he could keep tabs on and make certain that they produced Christ Jesus perfectly. And it all began with this man and this woman, Eve, Eth ha Adam, this very man. Okay? So now, hopefully that makes sense to you, and I, and I haven't made this too long and too wordy. But there were 2,000 years worth of people already running around on the earth and doing stuff before Adam was, was formed. Okay? Bef before the family of Israel began. There was already people on the earth doing stuff for 2,000 years. He's not reiterating something that he, he's already talked about in the first chapter. So you have to follow this stuff consecutively. God lays these things out for you step by step. And it was so simple. And I couldn't see it for the longest time. I couldn't see it. And then, bam, you know, the simplicity of it and the obviousness of it, psh, of course, right? I mean, so when, when someone asks you, well, where did Cain get a wife? Well, he, he went to the land of Nod, 
east of Eden. So he went into what I figure is probably the area of Mongolia, or people in the truth community might think of it as Tartaria. All right? And he took a wife from those people. Because th there was plenty of people on the earth. When, when Cain was born, there was already an earth full of people. Okay? It, it's, not, it's, it's not allegory. It's not teaching us a lesson. It's not two made-up characters with God trying to show us a story or something. These are actual people. This is the first man of the family of Israel. He is the progenitor. He is the greatest grandfather. Adam, Eth, Pot, Adam. Okay, and it goes on from there, and 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 it's it's very compelling. But let me tell you something: if 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 it was so that uh, that Adam was was just somebody, we'll we'll get into this next time because this this will show you that Cain and Abel were fraternal, fraternal twins, not identical, but fraternal. It, this, you know, if the kids are listening, I'd, I'd rather they don't. This, this gets a little mature, but it's necessary. The serpent in the garden was Satan himself. Okay? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was Satan's body. Okay? And, and it's, it's, it's very easy to document. It's very easy to teach. Okay, but God knows there's tender ears out there, and and He would like to see people do a little bit of work, uh, studying His Word. That's why He gave it to us, it's for us to study it and realize what's going on. Okay, but in any lunar cycle, a woman produces more than just one egg. Okay, in her ovum. All right, and fraternal twins are when two of those eggs. Uh, grow to be babies and they're separate. They they can even be from separate people. I mean, you, you ask your medical doctor. I mean, it's there's nothing unusual about this. Usually it's the same father, but that's not always the case. There's even been fraternal twins who have been different races. Okay? All right, so, you know, I, I don't want to get into the medical side of it, but Cain and Abel were fraternal twins. Identical twins is one egg being fertilized in a woman's ovary and that egg splits and turns into two people. They share the same DNA, they look alike, they talk alike, they act alike, blah, 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 blah. Fraternal twins are completely different. They could be brother and sister. One could be male, one could be female. They can have different fathers and that is the case with Cain and Abel. Okay? And don't, don't get thrown by this tree of knowledge of good and evil. God calls his children trees all the time. Um, Isaiah 61, trees of righteousness. You know, he calls people trees. He likens us to olive trees. All right, he, he uh, you remember when he, when, when he the, uh, spit and, and into some clay and put it in the man's eyes and and he said, it, the blind man, and he said, what do you see? And the man said, well, I, I see men as trees walking. I mean, it's not unusual. This is, this is our trunk. These are our limbs. We're, we're trees. God often likens us to trees, so don't, don't let that fool you. I mean, in, in, you know, that old serpent. Uh, let, let's go to Re Revelation, and I'll wrap this up because I think it's important, and I'll make a video of this uh, later. Go to Revelation chapter 20. These are all highlighted before because I've already done this video. And phew, stupid me, the uh, all you can see is me talking and there's no sound because I don't know how to work computers very good. But, uh, but what does it say here in verse 2? He says, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Verse 2 in chapter 20 of Revelation. And he laid hold on the dragon. That's one of Satan's names, the dragon. That old serpent. The old serpent? That's the serpent in the garden. Which is the devil. That's another of Satan's names. And Satan, Shatan, that's, uh, that's the adversary. And bound him a thousand years. Okay, so, so don't, don't, you know, you have to study. You've got to study the Bible. 
You can't just read through it and not, un you know, it doesn't do any good. You have to study it. It has to be a daily thing. The, the, the Bible, God sent it to you because he loves you, and he doesn't want you to be confused about all this stuff. He, he wants you to have the facts, okay? But it's, it's like it says in Timothy, study to show thyself approved. He's not just going to give it to you. All right, you, you have to study, and it has to, it has to be a daily thing. And I know at first, it, it, you know, it's it's like moving into a. a it, you first pick up the Bible, it doesn't make any sense. It's like moving to a new city, and you don't know any of the streets, you don't know where the corner store is, you can't remember how to get back to your new apartment or your new house. But after you drive around a while, it, it starts making sense, and and. It's no longer a matter of committing it to memory. It's just you do it so many times that it becomes a part of your daily life. And it, all of a sudden, it's not hard. You know where that street is. And then you venture further out into the city, and you know where, where the hot spots are in the supermarket. And it's, 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 it's the same way, you know, with the Bible. You, you have to start. And it, it may not make sense at first, but you have to stick with it. And you just have to do it every day. All right, and the King James will get it done for you. All right. But Adam and Eve are not allegory. All right. They were actual people. They are actual people. Because as of yet, nobody's ever died. Everybody who's ever lived is still alive. And nobody has ever died. Right. You have to know that. All right, but beloved, thanks for hanging out with me this long. Have a, have a great day. Uh, 2020, if it's even 2020, I mean, it, it might be 1,020, how, how would we know? But th this age is coming to an end fast, so, so have a great New Year's, thanks for hanging out with me, and, uh, and we'll pick a, a, another topic, uh, for another time, and, uh, and Lord willing, I'll return. So God bless you, and, uh, and so long.